Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crochet Accessories Club, part of our Project Monday. And this is the second session for our basic toe-up crochet socks that we started last month. This uh, pattern is designed by Nicole Cormier. Um, and last month we did, we um, started with the toe and worked through the increases to get it to fit our foot and then worked across, I'm gonna hide that part, making the foot of our sock. Um, and then this week or this month, we're gonna finish up our sock by um, creating the heel and then into the leg of the foot and then a couple of options for finishing it off. Um, she does give you, for heels, um, we're gonna do a traditional heel flap with a gusset, which is a pretty traditional um, heel in knitting socks. She does give you in the pattern some options for other kinds of heels. So I, she works through all of the steps, but gives you some directions if you wanna try a different heel. Having knitted socks before, I, I know that there is a particular kind of heel that fits my heel very well. I kind of have, um, my heel kind of sticks out and my, the top of my, the back of my ankle is really, really skinny and the back of my heel kind of sticks out. So I almost need a kind of a, a deep, a deeper um, heel cup for my heel to really fit in. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one fits on my foot. I did stop a little short on this one because I wasn't going to finish in time to get to, get to this. So I, I do need my foot probably to be just a hair longer, but I'm going to try it on and see how it fits. Um, so I'm going to work you through the heel flap and gusset process in getting onto the leg. So I am doing mine and I did my toe in a solid color and I did the foot of the sock in a self-striping yarn and then I'm going to do the heel back in the solid and then I'm going to switch back to the self-striping and I want you to see and um, Rocky who's here in class she was here this morning we worked through it you can um, it does work out you don't have to cut once you we're moving to your heel. You don't have to cut this yarn. So um, it, it does all work out, which is great. All right. So for this part of the class, you need your, your uh, sock worked up to about two inches shy of the total length of your foot. So I have a little sock ruler here that we sell in the store, which is nice because you can drop it in. I know what the length of my foot is like. I also have, and I and I couldn't. It's it's buried somewhere in my in my uh, yarn room. I have a like a cardboard cutout of my foot, which is really helpful for fitting knitted socks onto, um, which I could have dropped in and and to see where it was hitting me on the heel. But um, if I was making my sock a total length of a little over eight inches, um, or I'm sorry a little under eight inches, then I am actually just about two inches shy. And this is about where I should start my heel, okay? If I have, knowing that I have a really deep heel, I might find that as I'm knitting this, or excuse me, crocheting this next part, I might wanna make this part a little longer, which would then help in making the heel, the little cup that your heel is gonna sit in um, a little deeper. But um, the nice thing about crocheting is this works up pretty quick. And um, you can take it back if it doesn't quite fit without getting, you don't have to complete the whole sock to know that it's not going to fit. All right, so we're going to pick up um, with our pattern where it says heel flap, okay? So I have worked in the round and we had a beginning of round marker. I'm going to switch to my camera now. We had a beginning of round marker. Let's see, share. That we were moving um, so that it would, because we're working in a spiral, you're beginning around is eventually going to sh shift. So we were moving the marker to keep it um, straight with the sides. You notice I have a little dip here in my sock. It's because I picked up the wrong crochet hook and was knitting, uh, crocheting too tight there. 
Um, and I got back on track. Um, I also found that uh, because our toe lays flat, that I could take off that marker and just crochet in the round because then I can put the marker back. You always want it to be um, on the side. So I had this here on the side. When I was ready to start a new round for the heel, um, zoom in just a little here. There we go. I had crocheted this row in my self striping all the way to my marker, and then I stopped. And instead of continuing on, now we're going to work a heel flap back and forth. So we did a little uh, test this morning in class and found that, because eventually we're going to go back to this self striping yarn, and get it untangled. I'm going to tuck it into my sock so that I don't have this issue the whole time with it being tangled. I'm going to see if I can just tuck it in without that being for the time being. Or you can you can cut your yarn and then rejoin it when you want to. Just take that off. Huh? Okay. There we go. Perfect. So now I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna get in my way. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go back to my solid color, which I joined right here. Um, and I would then turned so that I was ready facing what's called the wrong side. Up until now, we've been working in the round and the right side of our project is always facing us. The wrong side is inside your sock. So now we're going to be working back and forth. So we are going to have a right side and a wrong side. So when I got back to my beginning of row marker, which is already popped off, which is okay, I then double checked to make sure that I had an even number of stitches. Um, we talked about that last time, that when you were doing your increasing for your foot, that um, kept trying it on and whatever whatever size you were working towards, you'll notice that they are all even numbers. Um, mine ended up being a little wider than it kind of in between sizes. So I have 46 stitches, okay, instead of 42 for the medium or 48 for the large. 46 is what was fitting me and that's what I'm gonna go with, which is just fine, as long as it's an even number. So then I worked back in my heel color, my orange, and I did, sing I chained one and I single crocheted back across half of those stitches. So half of my 46 was 23. <laughs> so much math late in the day. So I single crocheted across the 23 and then I chained one and turned and I went back and forth just across these 23 stitches. So at this point, we, we just have had a two. We haven't had a, a bottom or a top or anything like that. As soon as you create the heel, now this part becomes the top of the foot. This part becomes the bottom of the foot. These stitches that we are currently ignoring are called the instep stitches. And the stitches that we are working on across the back are our heel stitches, right? So we're going to be ignoring these instep stitches while we make the heel, and then we'll come back to them. So your heel flap, um, you're going to work back and forth in single crochet with a chain one across those 23 stitches until it is just, and she, and she says in her pattern, just shy of two inches. So let's... I am just shy of two inches. Now, I probably, knowing my foot, probably want to go closer to the two inches, um, knowing that I like a little bit deeper heel, but I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it for now and try it on and then I will know. You do want to finish with a right side, which means that we've got the bottom of the foot facing us. I finished with the wrong side row. 
And now it's time to turn the heel. So I'm going to chain one and turn so that my wrong side is facing. And I'm working right from the pattern here. And we are gonna single crochet across to the last, and for my size, I'm going to, oops. I'm going to single crochet across to the last nine stitches. Okay. Let's, let's do that. And what we're going to be creating here is called a short row. So I suggested this morning, so instead of trying to figure out where those are, I'm going to count my last nine stitches. It's two, three, six, eight, nine. And I'm going to put a marker there. So I'm going to single crochet until I get to my marker. So I mentioned earlier that the middle of my sock was a little tight because I had used the wrong hook. Oh my gosh, it was going so slow. Using the a bigger hook, the stitches are going by much faster. I probably would have been a lot further along than my sock that I realized. That. Okay. There we go. All right. So when I get to these last nine stitches, I'm going to take that marker out. That was just so I didn't have to constantly count. I am going to single crochet two stitches together. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. I'm going to go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. And I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. So I've taken two stitches and turned them into one. I'm gonna do one more single crochet in the next stitch. I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn. So now I'm back on the right side of my fabric and I am going to ignore these stitches. I, I didn't go all the way to the end of the row which is why it is called a short row. You don't go all the way to the end. And now I'm going to do single crochet until I have nine stitches on this side. So two, four, six, eight, and there's the ninth stitch. So I'm gonna single crochet, again, not going all the way to the end of the row. I chained one, turned, turned. Mm -hmm. Oops. Seven, and then I'm going to take that marker out and do the same thing. Single crochet two together. Pull up a loop, and do the next stitch, pull up a loop, run over, pull through all three loops. Do a single in, let's see, do a single in the next stitch. Okay, and now we're going to count the stitches in this short row. So we've created like this little rise just this little short row that is in the center of our heel flap. And I have a total of two, four, six, eight. I have nine stitches, okay? All right. Um, now we're gonna be picking up stitches, but our stitch count isn't, it isn't going to change. We're still gonna have these nine stitches. It's a little bit of magic. So now we're gonna begin picking up stitches, the next section. Um, 
So I got to the end. I'm going to chain one and turn, although she doesn't tell you that you do need to chain one and turn. And I'm going to work across this short row. And then at the end, I'm going to do a single crochet three together. So let me work across and we'll see what that looks like. So I have nine stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have one more stitch right here. I only have one more. And now I'm going to do a single crochet three together. And here's where the three stitches are. I'm going to single crochet together the last stitch of my short row. I'm going to single crochet into the side of that stitch. And I'm going to single crochet into the next unworked stitch that is not part of the short row. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. So I'll go into my last stitch of the short row. Um, go into the side of that stitch and pull up a loop. And then go into the last, to, to the, I'm sorry, the next unworked stitch that's not part of the short row. And you should have four loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over through all four loops. So we just took three, not three complete stitches, but three together and turned them into the one. Top of the stitch, the side of the stitch, and the next stitch, okay? I'm gonna chain one and turn. And we're gonna repeat this row. I'm still gonna have nine stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's one more. Okay. Um, so I still have the nine stitches in my short row. Now I'm going to single crochet three together again. That's nine. So I go into the last stitch of the short row, pull up a loop, go into the side of that stitch, pull up a loop, and go into the next unworked stitch that's not part of the short row, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops, chain one, and turn. And you are going to repeat this until we get all the way back to the ends. So every time we go across, we're gonna pick up one of these unworked stitches. And I'm just gonna work it back and forth here. Chain one and turn. You're still gonna have just those nine across the top. Seven, eight, into the last stitch of my short row. Now I'm going to go, so now this is a little taller. I can see where I did the three together previously, so that seems like a good place to go into the side. Pull up a loop. And let's go into the next unworked stitch and then pull them all together. Chain one and turn. And so I know we're doing, it sounds like we should be losing stitches or even gaining stitches, but because we're doing a together stitch, um, 
uh, that doesn't that incorporates extra stitches than the original nine they kind of cancel each other out and we still just have the nine so last stitch side stitch new stitch make sure you are going not into this corner but into the actual next stitch that has not been worked all together chain one and two and it's starting to do it now it's going to start to uh, curl in that severe decreasing that we're doing is going to start to make this little cup shape that your heel is going to fit into Make sure I'm going into my last stitch. I'm going to double check that I still have the name. There was my chain one and turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All right, into the last stitch. And I'll show you how I locate that. Um, that might not be something you've done before. I mean, I like the going into kind of where the three together from the previous row was as your side stitch. And then to the top of the next unworked stitch. Chain one and turn. When you do that chain one and turn, what you create now I've done two stitches. I've done this one here and this one here. And then there's like a little bump. And I call, I, I always think of it as like a little stopper. The little bump is the chain one. And when I turned it, it, it got a little bit twisted and it looks like a little bump. So that tells me that was my starting point. And I don't want to go past that because now we're getting this nice little slope. You can see how easy it would be to keep going particularly if you're not um, great at locating or recognizing your stitches. So that was two, three. And I'm gonna double check when I get to the other end, I'm gonna look for that little bump. It should be at the end of the last stitch. And that can keep you from, so now I can see it, that's right, right there. So I have this one to do, and then the next one's the last stitch. And we are kind of pulling this, distorting the stitch by uh, crocheting it together with stitches down the side and in a row far below. So it might start to get pulled a little tight, but that's what's supposed to happen. Chain one and chain. So now you can see it is, I turn it this way, it is starting to curl into a heel shape. So that's what short rows can do. I'm going to keep working. Um, we were talking about this on Instagram Live tonight. Make sure I did my chain one. Yep. That um, short rows are a way to create shaping in either a knitted or crocheted garment. But I don't think that they have been widely used in crochet, or at least I haven't recognized that they are. Um, maybe it's only been a lot more recently that I've branched out into doing um, more shaped garments, you know, less blankets and, and, and toys and things like that, where you really want to get a shape. There's my little stopper. Um, but you can do this if you are, it's a way to shape, it is in knitting and, and I think in crochet too, it can often be used to shape the back of a neck of a shirt or a sweater because it allows you to, without creating um, more rows, it, cre it allows you to create some depth. 
Now this is a fairly severe short row in that we are decreasing, returning and decreasing at every end here. So we're getting a nice sharp turn. But if you were to do this a little more gentle or to space them out, you could get a nice like little rise without it, um, without it curling like that. And that's really nice for the back of a sweater because you want that neck to come up a little bit higher in the back without adding any extra um, full rows. You just add a little bit of height in this section. But since this is so severe, it's, it's curling and creating the heel shape that we want. So like I said, you're gonna continue this on until you've gotten all the way to the end of your unworked stitches. And I'm gonna consult the pattern here in just a second to double check. Um, and when you are, we should have, when we've done the last one, we should have, oops, this is my decrease, the right side facing us. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go a little further down. So you can see it's pulling it in. Um, there's a little bit of, of gapping there, but that also is giving a little bit of stretch to where your heel's gonna fit in. So I just have a couple more to do. This part actually goes pretty quick. Not working across that many stitches to begin with, just half of them. And with the short row, I have one more on this end. When I get down here, I should have two more left, and that'll put me on the prep side. You don't want to pull it too tight because then you get a knot. There's my little bump right there. You could mark that stitch if you have a hard time locating it. I figure if you're using a really dark yarn when you make your first stitch. So I do have two stitches left here. I'm gonna pick up one now and I will have one left. Okay. Um, you could, you know, when you make your first stitch after you chain one, you could put a marker there and then you wouldn't be hunting for it. If you're, ha I always recommend that. If you're having a hard time seeing where you should be ending a row, um, as long as you know that your the end of your row is um, the first stitch of the previous row, which I would say nine times out of ten it is, then put a marker there, and then you don't have to worry about it. I wish I had learned that earlier on. It would save me a lot of pulling out. Okay, so I'm down here. I've got the side, and I only have one more unworked stitch, and I know it's the last one because there's a little bump telling me to stop. Right. Put it on four, chain one and turn. And we'll get the last one here. Six. Mm-hmm. 
Sketch aside and the last unworked stitch, single crochet those together. And we have finished our heel turn, our heel flap, and the turning of the heel. So if I look at it, got my other yarn tucked in there, but we've continued on. So here's the bottom of our foot and here's our heel. So now our next step is to create the gusset, which is the part that connects our instep with the back of the heel. So now we're gonna be bringing, we're gonna bridge the gap here and we're gonna get back to where we're just gonna be creating the leg, okay? So now we are on the gusset stitches and you're gonna need some markers. You're gonna need three stitch markers. And since you're gonna have to be going around and around, I recommend um, removable ones, something like this. Okay. So I got to the end and picked up my last stitch. I single crocheted those together and she tells me not to turn because I wanna continue on the right side. We are done working the wrong side at this point. We're gonna be going back to working in the round, okay? So we're gonna pick up 14 stitches across our heel flap here. So between where my yarn is right now and where I started, um, my heel flap. I want to I want to get 14 stitches. <clears throat> how you do that is up to you. Here's how I like to do it. Anytime I have to get, I have a certain number I need to pick up in a certain space. Let me pull over here so I don't lose it. Here's what I do. So here's my whole space. From here to here, I need to get 14. If I were to fold it in half, and find the center point, and put a stitch marker there just a temporary stitch marker. Okay, that's the halfway point. I know between here and here, I've got to get seven stitches. That is easier for me to see where I'm gonna pick up seven stitches, okay? And sometimes it's a little trial and error, and sometimes that's the best way to do it, okay? So I'm going to, I'm gonna go into this very, end of this very next row. And we're picking, we didn't chain one or anything, we're just gonna pick up. And when she means picks up, we're gonna do single crochet. So that's one. And then I'm gonna go here. By marking that halfway point, you could, if, if it's a larger area, you could even divide it into fourths. You know, I could figure out where I needed to pick up roughly three and a half stitches. Um, I don't have to work all the way across the row and get here and realize I have to pick up four more stitches and then have to rip it back and, and keep going. This helps you kind of guide what you're doing. So just so that since I'm talking and doing this all at the same time, I'm going to put a marker where I ended so I can count my stitches and then I'll take those out. So I've gotten two. You might end up putting two in the same space and that's okay. That's three. Let's put. And a lot of it is picking them up or crocheting into them and liking the way it looks. If you end up picking them and making a big hole, take it out and, and change where you put the hook. All right, so that's one, two, three, that's four. Let's put and the next one here, five. I'm going to put another one in there, six, and one here, seven. I'm going to take that marker out. And now I need to get seven more until I get to here. So I've gotten an idea of, you know, I can't be skipping big gaps, how many I need to uh, insert my hook to pick up there. So let's do one right here. That's one. Let's go right here, two, and let's do three. I'm gonna put another one in there because I know I did that on the first half. That's four. 
Let's do five. Let's do six. And then let's do seven. Okay, perfect. So double check that you've got 14 right there. Okay. After you get the 14, now that I know I have 14, I can take this out. Um, hold on. She goes on, she uses the word gobbledygook, which I just love, um, because it can be a little fraught about where to pick up those stitches. But I like the way that looks. It looks even, it doesn't look bumpy or uh, with big gaps. If you're unhappy, pull it back and, and redo it until you get a, a, a line that you like there, okay? Um, I am going to mark this 14th stitch. Okay. You know what I'm going to, I'm gonna be switching back to my, um, so we're gonna to continue to work on the instep. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm done with my orange yarn at this point. So I'm gonna cut it so it's not in my way. And I'm going to take last one. And I'm changing colors. I always like to do it with the last yarn. And because I left my yarn attached there, I'm going to work over my ends. If you can decide to do or not do your working yarn. Now, this is only obviously only applies if you are changing colors for your heel and your foot. If you're doing all one color, you, you don't have to do any of this. And do my last yarn over with my striping yarn. Get those little tug. I'm just going to lay them here and I'm going to work over them a little bit. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to mark my 14th stitch, which is right there. Okay. Now I'm going to work across my instep stitches, which there should be the, this is the other half. So I should have, what did I say, 23. Hopefully we're right. So this is called working over your ends if this is not something you're familiar with. I just laid my, my beginning of my orange and the ending of my orange just kind of over and a little to the back of the stitches I'm crocheting into. And they're just getting caught up in here. It's a nice way to uh, not have to weave away so many ends. And since this is fairly firm, um, I think they'll stay fairly um, secure there. So I'm just gonna, until I, I cut them about four inches long and I'll just keep working over them until I cut all the ends. And then you, if the little ends pop out, you can trim it. All right, so work across all these instep stitches. I'm just working over uh, those ends catching them in the stitch. So many colors going on here. I'm not particularly concerned about the little spots of orange that might be coming through. Um, that this working over my ends is something I really like to do when I'm making granny squares because there, there's a lot of ends you might have to weave away. It's much easier to them. Work them in. If you're really concerned, you could just do this for a little bit and then leave them hanging and then weave the rest of it away when you want to. So I'm, I'm just going to leave them there. And continue on. Let's move it to the other side. I have I've lost count of my counting, but I'm not going to. This is going to change back to the orange when I get to the other halves. Yeah. 
So now we're gonna come to the other heel flap, the other side of the heel flap, excuse me, and we're gonna be picking up those 14 stitches on this side. Although this time we'll be doing it with, I'll be doing it with my striping yarn. Um, you're not going to be able to tell the difference because the next row over here is gonna be in the striping yarn. It's gonna be just fine. All right, so I need to pick up 14 between, there's my, the last one I picked up when I was doing the shaping was right there because there's my little stopper. And I've got to pick up 14 between here and here. I'll do the same thing. You could measure, I'm just gonna fold it in half. Mark my halfway point. You get seven. Plus here. You're going to want to mark the very first of the 14 stitches here. Here we marked the last of the 14. This time we marked the first of the 14. Okay. So those markers are gonna be um, separating what we have of our heel from our instep. And that will be important to, to see. That's one, two, three, four. Six. Okay, a little faster. Seven. All right. Eight. My marker should have been here. Sorry, it still worked out. 13. 14. Okay. Okay. Now, okay, so now we've gone, we started uh, over here, we picked up the sides of this heel flap, we put a marker in the very last one, we worked across our instep, we picked up 14 and we marked the first one, and now your third marker, and I'm going to switch these out so that I can tell what's what here. So these are my two that are separating the instep from the rest of it. Okay. And um, we're gonna do our, start our repeat going around here. So when I make the first stitch here, of, sorry, this is my new beginning of round. Okay. Eventually those markers down by the instep are gonna go away. And you're gonna to need to know where your round begins and ends, and this will be it. So I, I have a different color marker for that. So I'm All right, so now I'm gonna work all the way, bring in every stitch till I get to that marker right over here. And the way we create a gusset is, you know, right now we have way more than the, you know, 23 stitches. We have 20, you know, we had tw 23 for our instep and 23 for our heel. And then we did all of this crazy shaping 
And then we have way more than 23. So to get back down, we've got to get these stitches back down to 23 so that we can create the leg of the sock. We do that by creating a gusset um, and some decreasing. So when I get, I'm gonna to go to one stitch before um, the marker. Here's my, my marked stitch. So I'm gonna need to decrease my marked stitch and the one right before it. So I'm gonna work right up to there. Okay, and now I'm gonna single crochet these two stitches together. So take out your marker. And pull up a loop. Here's the marked stitch, pull up a loop. Crochet them together, put your marker back. Very important to be putting your marker back. Work across your instep stitches. And once we get across this next one, I'll describe the rest of it to you. But really, hard part is over. So we want to make sure the reason we have those markers on the first step, uh, the first stitch, excuse me, um, of the heel is we we don't want to decrease across our instep. We only want to be decreasing stitches that are part of the heel. We want those stitches to work back down so that we have the same number across the instep as we do the heel. So I want these 23 stitches to stay 23 stitches. So when you get to this side, after you've worked across your instep, you're going to work all the way right up to the marker. You're not going to stop short of it like you did on the other side. And that should be 23. All right, and now I'm going to single crochet together that marked stitch and the one right after it. There's the marked stitch. There's the one right after it. Together, put your marker back. So we only took a decreased stitch out of the heel, not the instep. And then you continue on to your beginning of round marker, which is right up here at the back of the heel. I like working with self-striping yarn because um, it keeps it interesting. <laughs> I never know what I'm about to get. But when you get to your beginning of round marker, you are going to right up to it. There's no decreasing that happens here, so you don't have to worry about that. Take the marker out, make your stitch, put the marker back. Okay, and now we've completed one whole decrease round, because here's where we started. We went around, we stopped short of this marker and did two together. We continued along the instep. 
We got to the marker and did two together here and came back to our beginning of round. Now you're gonna do just one even round of single crochet. And then when you get back here, you're gonna do another decrease round. So I'll work around, stop, uh, do the last two stitches together, put the marker back, work across the instep, take the marker out on this side, do these two together, come back to your beginning of round, and then do one round of just single crochet. So you're gonna alternate a single crochet round with a decrease round. It's really starting to look like a sock neck. There you go. So as you do that, as you get these decreases here, this is going to pull in. Every time you do a decrease round, you're gonna lose a stitch, you're gonna lose a stitch, you're gonna lose a stitch. And then you're gonna have this nice round in between and uh, you're gonna get back down to 23 stitches. So every time you do a decrease round, you lose two stitches. You could count now and see how many you have. And that would give you an idea of how many rounds. Let's say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Should have thirteen because I've only done one decrease. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, eight, thirteen. Okay. So make sure you've got a marker that's going to stay in there. We'll pay attention to what you're doing. Um, so that's 13, 14, 16, 18, 20, 4, 6, 8, 30, 2, 4, 5. So I've got 35 stitches. I need to get back down to 23. Not many. <laughs> Too tired to do the math. So, you know, you have, uh, a, you're gonna take out two every time you do the decrease and then have a, just a regular round in between. I'm gonna, Rocky, can you hold up your sock? Cause you, I think you've got one a little further along to show what the gusset looks like. And I'm going to, uh, oh, let's see, put her on the, on the spot. Okay, um, hold on, let me turn this. I'm gonna stop sharing here, it'll help if I stop. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, now. Let me pull my yeah my strings here. Okay. There you That's go. It. Go perfect. So mm -hmm. you can see right along. Um, she also changed. Hold it up a little higher. So she's decreasing. Are you down to your your stitches amounts yet, or not quite? Oh, I see. Um, I have one one more um right. one more little side okay. and then I'll be down to the 42 for mine. So her the hand on the on the left side of the screen that's your beginning of round marker. Mm -hmm. And then the first one is her um her her decrease marker and they're much closer <laughs> because she's been doing the decrease and they're going to get much closer together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. All right. So and, once you get back and down I'm here on my second one. <gasps> nice. <laughs> <laughs> love it. She understood the assignment. I love it. <laughs> All right. So once you get down, um, you get back down to your original number of stitches that you started with. In my case, it's 46. I think in Rocky's case, it's 42. Um, yep. Then you're going to shape the leg. It's just going to be a tube coming up and you can make the leg of your sock as long as you want. Um, at this point in the pattern, she gives you other heel ideas. Different, there are different ways to shape a heel. There's a short row heel where you, um, you don't have a gusset, you just do short rows. Um, you can also do an afterthought heel and she gives you directions on that as well. So you might try that another time and if you don't find this particular heel fitting for you. Once you're done, um, she just finishes her sock 
works the leg and then does a row of reverse single crochet to finish off the top. I kind of like a little ribbing, a little stretch at the end. So what you could do is make, you know, come up as far as you want um, for your leg. And then just like if you were crocheting a hat and adding, adding ribbing to it, you could then pick up around your tube. Would you pick up around the tube or would you work out? Uh, usually when I, I have a pattern where we, we work out. Where and you work you out. Up, you work out and then you pick up the stitch attached to the rest of the garment and then you work out. So, Perfect. And then yeah. you can have like a little ribbing that will stretch at the mm -hmm. top of the sock and it will look like a traditional sock. So after I post this video, I'm going to find a, a link to a pattern that will show you how to do that, how you can add that. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like um, just a, a finishing with a reverse, a tight single crochet isn't necessarily going to feel great on my leg. Depends on how right. high you're going. If it's really mm -hmm. short, it might just be fine. But if you're going up a little higher on the leg, you might want something mm -hmm. that's going to grip your leg a little bit better. And yeah. that's where the ribbing, like the ribbing of a hat does. Okay. Right. And I want to say it was a hat I was making that was doing that, um, <clears throat> completed the ribbing like that, where it went out and then it came back. And it you start, up. you started the hat, you did the hat part first and then added the ribbing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same, same concept. So that's, I'm going to look yep. for something that I can safely without copyright issues. <laughs> right. <laughs> here. And I'll add that to after the video, um, if that's something you guys want to do. So, okay. That's all I have. Do you have any questions, Rocky? No, I, I, you know, I was starting on my other one while you were doing this, like, let me do this. <laughs> so I was very um, surprised that I remembered <laughs> yes. the different things. Well, it does. It's, it's almost like magic. It really comes yeah. together. You know, once you get back down to your original number of stitches, if you're just doing a pair of shorty socks, you're almost, you're basically done. You just mm -hmm. have to come up as high as you want around your ankle and then either add some ribbing or just finish it off um, and you're done. So the I think the hardest part is shaping your toe and getting the right fit and then turning right. the heel, which I hopefully this has shown you, it's not as hard as you think it might be. Mm -hmm. So, um, and once you understand how a sock is created, if you were to find another sock pattern or even a slipper pattern, I think it will make a lot more sense on how it can be created to fit your foot well. So we were talking this morning, um, you know, I have a little bit wider heel and then it gets narrow, like about this part of my foot, the back mm -hmm. of my foot. So instead of, um, you know, when you work across and you leave the nine stitches, I think uh, once I try this on, I'll know for sure, but I suspect that I will want to go a little further. I will want to make my short row more than nine stitches wide. Mm -hmm. I think I might want it a little bit wider, which will give it a little bit wider pocket for my heel to fit mm -hmm. into. And then yeah. I can come back up and then it can fit, it can fit nicely that way. So mm -hmm. there are ways to, um, to change that shaping. Um, if you have a really narrow heel, then you probably don't, you probably want to stop short of those nine stitches. Maybe you only want five stitches in your short row, which mm -hmm. would make this part much more narrow. Mm -hmm. But if that fits your, you can do that. As long as you get back down to your original stitches, you can play with this as much as you want. Um, there, there is room to play there. Or you could try one of the other heel shapes, either, either the afterthought heel, which is the heel that's added um, after <laughs> the fact, <laughs> or short, short row heel, where the entire heel is made like a triangle, where you're working short mm -hmm. rows out. Um, you could try that as well. So, I hope you enjoyed crochet socks. I'm not completely convinced, but <laughs> I, am, I am much, um, I was very surprised by how well it worked. And mm -hmm. I'm anxious to finish this one and try it on. I will post a picture of it on my foot when it's all is said and done. Um, this will be one of my finished objects for. <laughs> I, no, mine too. I'm going to try to have, have mine done by uh, this weekend. Nice. Nice. Oh. All right. Hey. Well, thank you, everybody. Alrighty. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. All bye right. Bye. bye.